John Bloody Summit. John Summit decided to share his opinion regarding Boiler Room. And I think it's really interesting, personally, because it's odd. Because John Summit tweeted this, quote tweeting this post that featured Rebecca Black playing a Friday 360 mashup at her Boiler Room set. You know who Rebecca Black for the viral hit that she did when she was a literal teenager, I think, or maybe even younger. She's grown up into a very attractive and buxom young lady. And um, she now does music herself, right? And I guess she now DJs. She's the boiler room, clearly. Um, I think it's probably a mix between a DJ set and probably a live set. Anyway, it's not out yet, but somebody recorded a little clip from it and posted it. And obviously people are going a bit crazy for it. John Summit decided to quote tweet it and say, that's it, boiler rooms are dead. And the funny thing about it is that he could be right i just feel like he's the wrong messenger boiler room might be dead maybe rebecca black appearing at boiler room is a sign that it is dead but i think john summer is in no place to say anybody is dead or not dead because he's really really shit his music is terrible um that edm stuff that he makes is like legitimate like ear rape shit um lowest common denominator of music like personally as a as a human being again I, I i like how he speaks how he comes across in interviews and shit i think he's got some really um nuance and round and grown up and very smart in, insightful opinions on electronic music and djing and professionalism and all this malarkey and he's got a good like you know kind of origin story and shit kinda but as even his face like he might have one of the most punchable faces you've ever seen in like dance music ever especially as a dj ever 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 so it's weird to see him basically trying to say rebecca black is corny and lame and now we should like all not watch boy room anymore because rebecca black's on it if anything rebecca black is i would say way cooler in my opinion way cooler than john summit i would much rather spend a hundred dollars to see rebecca back rebecca back rebecca black play somewhere than john summit play somewhere and also, why does he feel like he should be the arbiter of what's dead or not dead anyway, especially when it comes to Boiler Room? It could be argued, Boiler Room's been dead for ages. Ever since that OG guy sold it, it's always been dead. I think, did he, sold, did he say it's like dice or something? For like millions and millions and millions. Ever since, I, I don't know, people could argue Boiler Room's been dead ever since they had like Ray-Ban collaborations and shit. Like, he wasn't even there when it began. Like, I was. A few other, I'm sure a few of you other people out there were probably there also. Back when Boiler Room used to be at the, like, the pickle factory in Hackney and shit. Like, yeah, okay, maybe we can say Boiler Room is dead because we got to see, like, some legendary acts, like, in the beginning, right? Floating Points, Jamie XX, all these people who are legends now in the game, you know, doing some great stuff in the beginning. But why is John Summit acting like he was there and now, oh my God, it's so dead? Like, you weren't even there. But maybe this is like a new thing with like younger kids and shit. Maybe it's like they have this like weird sense of like ownership and like, I don't know, like gatekeeping of a scene, of a time in culture and music that you weren't even present for. Like, if anything, a Boiler Room, I could, it could be argued, and I, I would definitely stand by this because I feel like Boiler Room gets a lot of unfair slack because I feel like it's probably a very hard business model to make sense monetarily. I think in the beginning, they probably should have done the right thing and paid everybody. I think they probably fucked in the beginning when they were not paying people and saying, oh, it's an opportunity, right? That's a bit obviously scummy because they're clearly getting a lot of money in. They're putting on these big events, they're selling tickets and shit, pay the DJs. But I think overall, Boiler Room's probably done more good, in my opinion, for nightlife, dance music, and DJ's careers than it's done negative. Personally, it's probably done way more across the you know across the time it's been around. And if anything, the way it's been able to reinvent itself without kind of losing its kind of core and what it's about all these years has been really, really impressive. And I feel like, if anything, the fact that they haven't really gone too far commercial where somebody like a John Summit could be playing there is, I think a real real benefit to what like they should be applauded for that because i think that if they really were to sell out they would be 
booking people like him and his friends. But the fact that they don't go that far, I think is a testament to how they're basically very hands-on, very intentional about how they approach what they do. And it's something that people should be kind of celebrating for. So if for me, I just feel like he's not he's in no place to say, you know, Rebecca Black is corny or lame because he's way lamer if in any in every aspect across the board. Maybe he's like saying this because he might have got aired. Because I remember he made this tweet earlier um, to Charlie XCX saying that, oh, I've got this song for you. It's really kind of like, really like the most cringy, bath inducing like tweet to try and get Charlie XCX's, you know, attention to try and be on a remix album, I'm assuming. And he probably got left on red or left on scene. And he hasn't been able to kind of like, you know, he hasn't been able to kind of get over that. And now he's seeing Rebecca Black at Boiler Room doing a mashup of a charlie xx song he's probably thinking to himself fuck how did she get a remix how did she get one how did she get that opportunity and i don't you know maybe that's part of it maybe there's a little bit of like jealousy envy going on there just because not i don't think of the career because i think john summer is a probably a bigger um icon or celebrity or artist than rebecca black at the moment but i think in terms of the opportunity he's probably a little bit gutted he didn't get that chance and i don't think he's actually played boiler room i don't think john summit has played boiler room i don't think so he sold out a bunch of places i think he sold out madison square garden he played big events he's done what he's done but let's be let's be real the edm the type of music that he plays the it's just so fucking bad um it would be a real real shame if you got to see that on boiler room like no one want to see that so him going out here kind of pointing fingers is a little bit rich like come on bro you are you're kind of bad you know you're kind of shit let's be real your music kind of fucking sucks so you're in no place to be pointing fingers at others and rebecca black's a fucking legend so let her do her thing but you know he wasn't happy and then um again he, he did another tweet and said do people not know that you can just pay boiler room to brand an event for you they're selling cool and underground it's a cooked concept but that goes to step that's the same you could he's right probably maybe who knows but that could also be said for every electronic music event. Like, it's all the same. Especially if they're not underground. Like, they're all doing that. Every single event has to do that because that's how you make money. That's how you can keep those events going. Like, at a certain level, that's how you can book people like a John Summit. You know, a brand, an event probably has to brand it in a particular way. Not for a particular person, but they have to brand it. And they have to maybe sell a version of Cool to even afford to raise the money to pay a DJ of a John Summit's calibre you know so it's like that's where we are at the moment like are you gonna be playing for a thousand dollars for like 500 people no of course not so if you want to be getting your big dj fees you're gonna have to be playing events where they're gonna be branded they might not be the most core thing in the world but they are what they are in it so they this you know the, what you call it the scene is what it is and i think at the moment now if you're boiler room and you're doing the scale of events that they're doing i think they're doing a good job of kind of balancing it you know of like doing stuff a bit more that's tapped in within the local scene local communities i think they've got an actual thing i, th I think i saw it recently actually on their instagram account maybe where they were posting these clips or maybe on their youtube where they're doing this new thing where they're going to be um highlighting collectors around the world which is going to be quite fun i think um, highlighting different party collective and nightlifes and scenes and shit and putting them up on their streams and stuff so if you want to get tapped in to find out while going for the new delhi scene while going for the scene in bogota and shit you can find all these like local um collectors and stuff that are doing great things so that you can maybe get an insight into what they play and then who knows maybe next time you're going to book a trip there so that's a really good way that they balance it they're able to balance the kind of nightlifey underground shit <clears throat> and also the kind of overground shit that they do with all the big brands and stuff so i'm all for it man i'm all for it but i just think in my personal opinion that john summit is in no place to say that rebecca black is corny or that her appearance at the boiler room is making it dead no she's in no place to, he's in no place to do that whatsoever rebecca black forever rebecca black forever in my humble humble opinion but again what do i know what do i know yeah big up uh he's saying here buh, 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 buh. big up big up don dutta in nyc only finance bros and ig tiktok influencers go to john the summit shows yeah yeah, yeah. I, I think that's part of his that's part of his um origin story in it that's why people like him um the whole like I, I was an accountant and then i you know chucked it all away or like you know put it to one side to come pursue my dream of djing probably should have stuck to accounting to be fair it's probably a cooler job overall you would imagine um but yeah it's like you know whatever the the, the original story is what it is i think his up has been really quick that's been quite cool to see um and maybe he's like he's 
he's quite a personable guy like he comes across quote unquote normal I think that's probably what people like about him he, he doesn't seem to have like the biggest ego in the world I don't feel like maybe he's different in person um, but I don't know I just feel like come on bro you got you got to know who you are you got to have a little bit of self-awareness like you're John Summit we, we've all heard your music we've all heard the stuff you play you know what I mean we've seen the places that you're playing at the pyrotechnics the fucking two buttons done on the shirt like come on bro like come on like you can't be here pointing fingers telling people who's good and who's not good and who's bad who's dead who's not cool it's like bruh we've seen you play we've seen what you play we've seen you play you're in no place to talk please you're in no place to talk but again what do i know